Safeway. Since 1936, the name to look for when you want innovative engineering, superior product design, outstanding customer support, and the strongest distribution network in the industry. Safeway's tube and clamp scaffolding presents the ultimate in flexibility. We have developed this program to give you a better understanding of Safeway tube and clamp scaffolding, its components, handling, erection, and dismantling procedures. Our program is designed to allow you to make sure that you remember the key points that you are shown in the video. Every few minutes the program will break for a short review of the information you have just viewed. A multiple choice question will come up on the screen. Like this trivia question. How many bars, stripes are there on the American flag? You will be given several seconds to decide on your answer. Then, a few seconds apart, each of the wrong answers will fade away like this. When only the correct answer remains, a scene from the program covering the question will come up on the screen. Now let's begin. Tube and clamp scaffolds from Safeway have three basic steel components and one assembly tool. There are base plates of two types. Nominal 2-inch galvanized steel tubing in various lengths from 4 to 16 feet with twist lock fittings on each end and two types of clamps. The right angle or rigid clamp is used to connect tubes at right angles. The swivel clamp is used to join tubes at any angle. Both types of clamps are tightened to 45 foot-pounds using a tube and clamp wrench. Now that you have seen the basic building blocks of tube and clamp scaffolding, let's look at some of the points covered in the job site inspection. To begin with, the person who inspects the job site must be qualified to do so. That's because the information gathered will be used to determine the scaffold requirements. At a minimum, the investigation should include the type and condition of the surface upon which the scaffold will rest, weather conditions during the erection and while the scaffold is in use, likelihood of pedestrian and vehicular traffic, overhead and electrical obstructions, the weight of the scaffold plus the load to be put on it and the method of fall protection best suited to erect the scaffold. The intended scaffold use will then determine whether the design will call for a light duty, 25 pounds per square foot scaffold, or a medium duty, 50 pounds per square foot scaffold. All scaffolds must be designed and erected to support at least four times the maximum intended load applied or transmitted to it. Scaffolds to be erected higher than 125 feet must be designed by a registered professional engineer. Simpler scaffolds may not require a drawing. However, it is recommended that drawings or sketches be made for most scaffolds. When drawings are needed, they are based on the information obtained from the job site inspection and on component tube and clamp technical information available from Safeway. Now that the drawings, if required, are complete, you are ready for pre-installation checks. Begin by reviewing the scaffold plan double-checking the dimensions and components that will be required. Carefully inspect every component to ensure that none of them are broken, cracked, distorted, or damaged in any way. Tag and remove any damaged parts from the job site so that no one can mistakenly use them. Here's a very important point to keep in mind. Never intermix tube and clamp components made of steel and aluminum. Use only steel with steel and aluminum with aluminum. Solid saw and lumber used as scaffold platform planking must be graded as scaffold grade plank. Prior to use, inspect each plank carefully and remove any containing defects such as saw cuts, notches, dry rot, splits, discoloration, acid soaked, or those previously used as sills. The SIA handbook for inspecting solid saw and wood plank can also be used for reference. Finally, make sure that the erectors are wearing the proper personal protective equipment. The Safeway Fall Protection Plan has been designed to enable Safeway employees to recognize the fall hazards on a job and establish the procedures to follow in order to prevent falls. If you are not a Safeway employee and you do not have a plan of your own, OSHA requires that a competent person determines the feasibility and safety for providing your fall protection. Now, 
Refer to the scaffolding plan and mark the positions for the mud sills and lay them out. The sills should be level and in full contact with the supporting surface. Once the sills are in place, position the base plates in the center of them and nail them to the sills. We'll have more in a few moments. How many basic steel components are there in tube and clamp scaffolds? There are three basic steel components. A tube and clamp scaffold must be able to support how many times the maximum intended load. It must be able to support at least four times the maximum intended load applied or transmitted to it. What kind of planking should be used as platform material for tube and clamp scaffolds? Only scaffold grade planking must be used. Many erectors prefer to do some pre-assembly on the ground. This normally involves installing the clamps on the bearers. A bearer is a member that carries the deck or planking. Let's see how it's done. The scaffold we are going to build will be a four plank wide scaffold using four nominal 10 inch wide scaffold planks. This means that the scaffold will be 42 inches wide center to center of the verticals or posts. Using a four foot tube as a bearer, place two marks 41 inches apart and equal distance from each end. These marks are the center line positions of the clamps. Here it is again. Measure the total length of the bearers that you will be using. Subtract the center to center measurement of the posts and divide the result by two. The answer is the distance from the end of the bearer to the center line of the clamps. With your markings complete, assemble right angle clamps on all of the bearers you will be needing. To fasten horizontal members, never use swivel clamps only use right angle clamps. Now that your pre-assembly is done, you're ready to begin the actual erection. Here is a very important point to keep in mind. If there is any slope to the surface, you must always begin at the highest ground point. Always build a scaffold going down the slope or grade. Choose at least an 8 foot long scaffold tube as the base post. Install this post on a base plate with the socket end of the interlocking tube lowered onto the bayonet fitting on the base plate. It is then twisted and locked into place. The bottom bearer should also be as close to the ground as possible, but no higher than 12 inches from the ground. Leave room beneath it to allow installation of the runner as well as for a horizontal diagonal. You'll see why shortly. Install your clamps so that the bolt is on top with the flap hanging down like this. Now install the first runner. A runner is a member that spaces the post horizontally. It is a non-load bearing member. Set the runner then go back and tighten it. Runners just like bearers must have full contact in the clamp. All runners and bearer clamps shall have full contact with each other so that the bearer clamp will be supported by the runner clamps. Notice that both the runner and the bearer are on the inside of the post. Next we'll square the scaffold. This can be done easily using the 3-4-5 triangle method. From the center line of both the bearer and the runner, measure three feet along the bearer and mark it. Then from the same center line point, measure four feet along the runner and mark it. Now measure the diagonal distance between the two marks. It should be five feet. If it is not, your scaffold isn't square and will need to be adjusted. This portion of the scaffold is now self-supporting. Install another post on a base plate and twist to lock it. Clamp the other end of the bearer to the second post. Before finally tightening the clamp to the post, be sure to level the bearer. Assemble a clamp to the post under the bearer. 
add a runner, and be sure to square the assembly using the 3-4-5 method. Next, mark off the length of the bay on both of the runners according to the scaffold plan. This length cannot exceed 10 feet. The post spacing we are using is 7 feet center to center. Measure from the center of the first post and mark 7 feet. This will be the mark for the position of the next set of posts. Remember that all marks are always center to center. Then install the right angle clamps on both runners at the marks and tighten them down. Twist lock another post onto a base plate and assemble the post to the runner. Level the runner. After installing the post onto the other runner, install another bearer. Keep in mind that the bearers are always clamped to the posts on top of the runners and never to the runners. With all the horizontals leveled, you should now check the plumb on the posts to ensure that all of them are vertical. If any are not, plumb with a level until they are. Once the bay is square, install a horizontal diagonal with right angle clamps underneath the runners to keep the bay square. You are now ready to erect the next bay. First, twist and lock two more runners onto the ends of the runners in the first bay. Measure seven feet from the posts in the first bay and mark the runners. The next set of posts, bearers, and horizontal diagonal can now be installed and leveled. Repeat these steps until the scaffold base is complete. Now you can install work planks on the first level to make erecting the second level easier. Use at least two scaffold planks. Horizontal members on Safeway tube and clamp scaffolds must be erected at vertical intervals of no greater than six and one-half feet. So, begin by measuring from the bottom of the runner clamps on the first level of runners and mark the posts at six and one-half feet. This mark is the position of the bottom of the clamps for the next level of runners. Or, use a pre-cut 6-foot 4-inch measuring stick. A 1 by 2 works well. The measuring stick will set the proper distance from the top of the lower runner to the bottom of the runner at the next level. The runners should now be installed and leveled. Bearers are now clamped in place above the runners. Clamps may be preset on the bearers. We'll be back with more in a few minutes. Is a runner a load-bearing member? No, a runner is a member that spaces the post horizontally. It is a non-load-bearing member. Bearers are always clamped to Bearers are always clamped to posts. Vertical intervals of horizontal members should be no more than Vertical intervals should be no more than six and one-half feet. The next element of Safeway tube and clamp scaffold erection is the installation of bracing and ties. Braces and ties provide horizontal and vertical stability to the scaffold against sway and wind load forces. Braces and ties must be installed as the scaffold erection progresses. Begin by installing diagonal braces along the scaffold run. These are sometimes called sway or face braces. These braces are installed on the outside of the post so that they do not interfere with the decking. They must be installed on both faces of the scaffolding. Swivel clamps are normally used to install these diagonal braces to either the posts or the bearers. However, right angle clamps may be used in some situations. In this case, the diagonal is fixed to the bearer. It is easier to install the clamps on the posts or bearers first and then lay the tubing in the clamps. Install the face bracing, also known as longitudinal bracing, near the bottom runner coupler on the end post. And extend at approximately a 45 degree angle from near the base of both the first and last outer posts of a scaffold run 
toward the top of the scaffold. If the scaffold is longer than it is tall, repeat the bracing every fifth bay. On short but high runs, install the bracing at approximately a 45 degree angle from the base of the first outer post to the last outer post and alternate directions to the top of the scaffold. The next step is to install vertical bracing across the width of the scaffold at both ends, or at least every third set of posts along its length, and every fourth level vertically. This is done by installing a brace diagonally from the bottom outer runner near the end post upward to the next inner runner. Right angle clamps are used for fastening these braces to the runners. Install a second brace in the same manner, but in the opposite direction to form an X. Swivel clamps may be used if the braces are clamped to the post. All bracing should be installed as the scaffold structure rises. As the scaffold is erected, a proper means of access must be provided. One way of achieving this is by installing a Safeway access ladder. Clamp the ladder to the post as each level is erected and braced. Attach the access ladder to the vertical post using two SAUB brackets on the first section. Only one bracket per access ladder is required on additional ladder sections. Install guardrail gates at all platform levels. When erecting the scaffold higher, use a ladder to access the scaffold. Do not climb the scaffold structure as a means of access. As the scaffold structure rises, all procedures should be followed in the same order we have just shown you. Platforms are required as rest stops on scaffolds that are more than 35 feet high. Install rest stops at 35 foot maximum vertical intervals. Use scaffold grade planks on all work levels and rest stops or top platforms. Make sure that the planks span across a minimum of two scaffold bearers. Scaffold planks must also extend at least 6 inches but no more than 12 inches beyond their supports when the platform is 10 feet or less in length, or 18 inches when the platform is greater than 10 feet long. Planks extending less than 6 inches over their supports must be cleated or restrained from movement. When installing lapped planks, the planks must only be lapped over a support and each plank must overlap the other by at least 12 inches. Never overlap plank in any other location. Make sure that once the planks or decks are in place, they are also secured to the scaffold to prevent uplift. All work platforms must also have top and mid guardrails on all open sides and ends. The top guardrail height should be between 38 to 45 inches measured from the deck surface. 42 to 45 inches in California, with a mid-rail positioned halfway between the top rail and deck. The tubing for the guardrails is installed on the inside of the posts and is secured with right angle clamps. When scaffolds are 10 feet or more off the ground, tow boards at least 3 and 1 half inches high must be installed in those areas where people are required to walk or work below the scaffold to prevent any tools or materials from falling from the platform. As with guardrails, the tow boards are secured to the insides of the posts. If tools, materials, or equipment will be piled higher than the tow board, screening must be installed from the tow board or platform to the top guardrail. A canopy or catch platform may also be erected to protect employees below. We'll be back after this break. Where are sway or face braces normally installed? They are normally installed outside of the posts on both faces. Rest platforms are required at vertical intervals of not more than Rest platforms are required at vertical intervals of not more than 35 feet. The top guardrail should be approximately how many inches above the deck? The top guardrail should be installed approximately between 38 to 45 inches above the deck. 
The next element of Safeway tube and clamp scaffold erection is tying and guying. Standoffs, ties, and guys are installed to prevent the scaffold from tipping into or away from the structure being scaffolded. They must be installed on all scaffolds when the height to minimum base dimension ratio exceeds 4 to 1. However, some states, such as California, have even stricter requirements. They require tying or guying when the scaffold height is three times the minimum base dimension width. So always check your state and local codes. The first vertical ties are installed at the horizontal member just below the 4 to 1 base ratio height after which the scaffold must be tied every 20 feet vertically if it is 3 feet or less in width, and every 26 feet vertically if it is wider than 3 feet. Install the top tie at the top platform whenever possible. When not possible, install this tie no further from the top platform than 4 times the minimum scaffold width, or 3 times in California. Install ties as the scaffold is erected and then fasten them to posts as close to a horse member as possible. Place these ties at each end of the scaffold and along the run of the scaffold at horizontal intervals not to exceed 30 feet. A special note, ties may also be an extension of the bearer. The same rules apply for the attachment points of guy wires for guying freestanding scaffolding. However, guys and their anchorages should be designed by an engineer or a qualified person who understands the forces involved. If the scaffold completely surrounds a circular structure, standoffs may be used instead of ties. Keep in mind that ties and standoffs should be an extension of bearers or tubes clamped to vertical posts close to a horizontal member with right angle clamps. Always consult your project engineer before bracing tying or guying, and make sure that the run is properly tied, guyed, or braced according to the plan. Now that the scaffold has been erected, inspect it very carefully from bottom to top before any work is performed on it. OSHA also requires that all scaffolds and scaffold components be inspected for visible defects by a competent person before each work shift and after any occurrence which could affect the scaffold's structural integrity. Dismantling of a Safeway tube and clamp scaffold is quick and easy. Inspect the scaffold to ensure that it's safe to dismantle. You may have to add parts or increase the base width of the scaffold to correct any unsafe condition before tearing it down. Then simply reverse the procedure. Start with the uppermost component installed and work down the levels of the scaffold. Do not remove ties until the scaffold has been dismantled to that level. That's all there is to it. We'll be back with a conclusion in just a few moments. The federal OSHA height to base ratio requirement for placement of ties or guys is The requirement is four times the scaffold's smallest base dimension. After the first vertical tie, the next levels of vertical ties must be installed every They must be installed every 20 feet vertically if the scaffold is 3 feet or less in width and every 26 feet vertically if it is wider than 3 feet. Where must the top tie or guy be placed? The top tie must be placed as close to the top platform as possible but no lower than the 4 to 1 ratio. Ties and standoffs should be clamped to They should be clamped to posts with right angle clamps close to a horizontal member. Who must inspect the completed scaffold?
A competent person must inspect a completed scaffold before each work shift. That wraps up our program on erection of Safeway tube and clamp scaffolding. As you can see, it's extremely versatile, allowing you to scaffold virtually any type of structure. Always make sure you carefully study the scaffold plan. Review our safety guidelines and brochures if you have any questions, and make sure you are familiar with all of the instructions and Safeway safety guidelines for tube and clamp scaffolding. Because of the many variables which affect the performance of Safeway tube and clamp scaffolding, some of the information you have seen may not apply. For specific applications, contact your Safeway representative. Thanks for watching.